The subject that we want to discuss today with you is about spirit guides and guardians um, and your relationship with your guides and guardians. Does that make sense? So that's what we'd like to talk with you about today. Now, God's made this system, which is a, a really beautiful system, to, to actually help you with your life. Like a lot of times in our life on earth, we don't feel like we really have much help. Like a lot of times it feels like we're going through life um, a, bit, a bit rudderless without having much assistance from other people. And a lot of times when you go to ask another person about what's happening with your life, they're just as clueless about their life as you are about your own. So, so we end up finishing up discovering life through a process of experience, right? And in that process, we forget that God's actually given us a permanently assigned to us, basically, two assistants. They're, the reason why we forget that they're assigned is because they're both invisible to us. And so we forget that they're being assigned to us. And so the majority of people on earth have no idea that the, these spirits, these people who used to live on earth, um, have been assigned to them to help them through their life. The first person that's assigned to you, which is assigned to you uh, from the moment of your conception actually onwards, is your guardian. And your guardian is a spirit whose attempts to let you know when you're in dangerous situations and help you get out of those dangerous situations. So that's their primary role. So they attempt to guide you or, gu or guard you from harm and the harm that they're guarding you from is not just harm of what might happen to you on the earth. There's also harm that could happen to you from spirits as well. And they, to the best of their power, attempt to guard you from that harm as well, without breaking the laws of God doing so. So that's the role of the guardian. And the guardian generally stays with you almost uh, your entire life or until you no longer need a guardian. Now, for most people, it's their entire life. And very few people don't, no longer need a guardian until they pass into the spirit world and then they no longer need a guardian. So, so the guardian role is uh, often given to family spirits who have been before you, who have, who have been on earth before you and uh, have passed over into the spirit world. And they've progressed to a certain level of love where they can love you and care for you understanding the laws of God at the time. And these guardians um, often have a frustrating time of it because, because we're trying to do things and we're often doing things that are dangerous things in their, in their eyes and so they're trying to sh protect us in that environment and sometimes they'll try to protect you by dropping thoughts into your mind by saying you shouldn't be here. Well, why are you here? <laughs> you need to go away from here or something like that. And other times they try to influence other people around you in order to protect you if they can't protect you by talking to you directly. So that's the guardian. Is there any questions about your guardian like, that you'd like to... Because what we want to do is meet some of your guardians and meet some of your guides. Does that make sense? So, so later we'll have, we'll have some channeling, we'll do some channeling and you'll actually meet some of your guardians and meet some of your guides and hear what they really think about you and your life, <laughs> and, uh, and so forth, right? They already, they already want to say that they don't find it frustrating. No. Many of them feel deeply honoured to have that role in your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they don't find it as frustrating as I'm making out, but, uh, but because they, they see it as a precious assignment yes. given to them by God, actually, assigned by God, mm. and given to them so that they have a role in your life and so they are intimately acquainted with your life. They know pretty much, sometimes they know far more about us than we ourselves remember. They, they remember more things about our lives than we remember, oftentimes, because oftentimes we want to forget things that they remember. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to talk with some of your guardians and see, see how they feel about the role, but also they might bring up issues of that, you know, where they see areas of protection that, uh, that are open in your life, where, where you're not as safe as what you think you are, that, that if you could listen to them or hear them, that they'd be able to help you work through those issues. 
The second role which is assigned to you is assigned to you when you begin the process of spiritual investigation of some kind. So uh, for many of us that process begins in our sort of early, uh, late, late childhood, early teenage life where we start asking questions and for many of us we ask the questions very early in our life like you know when we're three, four, five years of age we often start asking spiritual questions of our family. And unfortunately for many of us our family have no idea how to answer those questions and so they give us answers that they were given by their own parents generally or they just say look I don't know. And, and unfortunately for many of us we have a tendency then to, um, to just say oh nobody knows and so we stop our investigation. But usually our investigation of spiritual matters starts at quite a young age. Like usually, you know, sh shortly after three years of age generally, we start asking lots of questions about life. Many of which our parents are either uncomfortable answering because they feel that we're not developed enough to understand the answer or that our parents don't know the answer. Uh, we, as a child, we often ask very direct questions. Um, questions that, that are very, very difficult for most people on the planet to answer. And so we learn at a very young age that some questions you don't bother asking anymore, which is unfortunate because we couldn't get answers to most questions, or all questions in fact. So our guide, at the time we start asking questions, our, gu our guides are assigned to us. Now our guides are people who have an interest in the certain field of endeavour that you have and therefore have more knowledge in that field than you have but who are more versed in love than you are. So, so for example, if you started uh, at a very young age started to having a scientific bent, like a, an interest in science. And I remember when I was five years of age, I, I bought a chemistry set and I was making little bombs out in the backyard <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> and as you do. Um, and uh, I had an interest in science at that age. And when you have an interest like that, you also then have a guide who has a common interest in the same kind of field as what you're now interested in. And that guide can guide you in that direction. But part of their role is to also guide you in the direction of understanding the universe and understanding how everything works, understanding how um, the whole universe uh, operates in terms of its laws and such. Now these guides don't know everything. They only know what they themselves have discovered. And, and sometimes they have a certain field of discovery and they haven't much interest in other fields of discovery. Does that make sense? So sometimes they have an interest in a certain, uh, certain form of discovery, um, like for example science, but they don't have an interest in philosophy or they don't have an interest in history or they don't have an interest in archaeology or other forms of discovery. And so what they do is when, they, when you're interested in that particular thing they guide you but when you're no longer interested they then say oh well he's no longer interested in that area or she's no longer interested in that area so I will leave and find another person and, and be assigned usually by higher spirits to another person who has an interest in that area and then wherever we have now changed our focus we get a guide who's interested in that area of expertise to guide us in terms of discovery of the truths in that particular area. Now that also applies from a spiritual perspective. So, so for example if I was interested in uh, Christianity then I'd have a guide who is in connected to Christianity in the spirit world, still a Christian in the spirit world who then guides me in terms of what they've discovered in the spirit with, with, that, with, with that area of endeavour. If I'm interested in New Age philosophy, then I'll have a guide who's more interested in New Age philosophy. And now it doesn't mean that the Christian or the New Age philosopher in the spirit world knows everything about the truth about those matters. They just know more than you do right, about that particular field of endeavour and they can guide you to the discovery of what they know through a process of influence. 
They're always going to be more developed in love, aren't they? Yes. They're always going to have... So sometimes we might attract spirits who have a similar interest who aren't our guides. They're just uh, someone who's passed and they think, yeah, this person on earth is interested in what I was interested in and so they go along for the ride. But your guide is someone specifically assigned to you who has more love than you uh, already within them, so they're in a higher sphere in the spirit world, and they are there specifically to guide you towards more love. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and that's and as Mary pointed out, that's very different to a general spirit who's around you, who has a general interest in the same area of expertise that you have, and so forth, and who's who who wants to then influence you down that track. And it's also very different to any malevolent spirits that you might have around you, because many of us do have malevolent spirits around us. And those spirits generally want to influence us off any track and down into the same level of debauchery they discovered through their life, generally. So, so we have all of these external influences around us at any one point in time, but the positive influence is always our guide and our guardian, the, the two separate roles of those two particular people. And sometimes it's one person who has both roles. Other times it's two separate people that have those separate roles and yeah. in each case they have both been assigned by higher spirits who have been who and the assignment really comes from God it's a direct desire of God's to bring all of humanity into a higher spiritual condition and so this assignment is made to every person even if we don't believe in spirits even if we don't believe in anything other than the physical it's still we still have these spirits assigned to us does that make sense, everyone? Mm -hmm. Now, is there any questions you'd like to ask about that so far? <laughs>